Hello, everyone, and welcome to this section, Querying Vector Data. In this section, we will demonstrate how to work with vector data through Python in QGIS. We will first work through loading different sources of vector data. Next, we'll move on to examining the contents of the data. Then, we'll spend the remainder of the section performing spatial and database operations on the vector data. Let's start with the first video of this section, loading a vector layer from a file sample. In this video, we'll load a vector data file, in this case a shape file, as a vector layer in QGIS. Vector data stored in a local file is one of the most common geospatial data formats. Vector data typically stores geometry with associated attributes. For ease of following the examples in this video, it is recommended that you create a directory called QGIS underscore data in your root or user directory, which will provide a short path name. This setup will help prevent the occurrence of any frustrating errors resulting from path-related issues on a given system. In this video and others, we'll use a point shape file of the New York City Museums, which you can download from github.com. Unzip this file and place the shapefile's content in a directory named NYC within your QGIS data directory. Now, we'll walk through the steps of loading a shapefile and adding it to the map. Start QGIS. Then, from the plugins menu, select Python console. In the Python console, create the layer. A layer has been created. Next, ensure that the layer is created as expected. Finally, add the layer to the layer registry. You can see your QGIS map here. The QGIS vector layer object requires the location of the file, a name for the layer in QGIS, and a data provider that provides the right parser and capabilities managed for the file format. Most vector layers are covered by the OGR data provider, which attempts to guess the format from the file name extension in order to use the appropriate driver. The possible formats available for this data provider are listed in this link. You can get the data providers here. Once we have created the QGIS vector object, we can do a quick check using the layer is valid method to see whether the file was loaded properly. We won't use this method in every video to keep the code short. However, this method is often very important. It's usually the only indication that something has gone wrong. If you have a typo in the file name or you try to connect with an online data source but have no network connection, you won't see any errors. Your first indication will be another method failing further into your code, which will make tracking down the root cause more difficult. In the last line, we add the vector layer to QGS map layer registry, which makes it available on the map. The registry keeps track of all the layers in the project. The reason why QGIS works this way is that so you can load multiple layers, style them, filter them, and do other operations before exposing them to the user on the map. Great! We successfully loaded a vector layer from a file sample. 